Ready, shithead? I'm ready, shithead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the intro, Gigi. Hey, uh, I'm doing a vinyl finds. This one is brought to you by Movo, I guess, wine spritzers. I'm going the girly route today. Yeah. I've never tried this. Peach. Peach white blend. Uh-oh, that's not politically correct. Anyways, I got a Vinyl Finds video. Two that came in the mail. The rest are what I found yesterday at a few record stores I went to. I went, I actually went to some record stores yesterday for the first time in months. I mean, I, I don't even remember the last time I went to a record store. Besides that one time I did a curbside. Anyways, this first one I'm going to show, it's... Red Cross, their debut EP, it was recorded in 1979, came out in 1980, came out on Posh Boy. This is a 40th anniversary edition. Side 1 has the full EP, Side 2 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 demos and a live track. Really good. It's, I mean, I... I dig this more now, I think, than when it came out. This is Jeff McDonald right here when he's 14, and here's Steve McDonald when he was 12. I mean, what, that's the one thing that's really amazing about this is how good of a bass player this kid was at 12 years old. It's amazing, dude. But yeah, it's really good. Annette's got the hits, cover band, I Hate My School. Yeah, I hate my school. Um, Steve's, he does background vocals. And he does lead vocals and uh, standing in front of posers. And his voice is just so high. I mean, his voice hasn't changed yet. It's funny. In fact, uh, well, never mind. Anyways, well worth it if you're a Red Cross fan. I, I think it's really cool. I mean, I ordered this maybe four days ago and it came yesterday, you know. It, but obviously it was shipped locally. But yeah, this is the inner sleeve. Got some really cool pictures of the band. That's what the label looks like. Oh, that's a different on this side. Um, this version of Red Cross had Stephen Jeff McDonald, had uh, Ron Reyes on drums, who he was the second singer for Black Flag, and you got Greg Heston on guitars, who went on to be the guitar player for Circle Jerks and Bad Religion. But yeah, really good band, man. Surprising how good these kids were, you know. Their very first gig was opening up for Black Flag. Really cool. Now this next one, I ordered, I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I don't think it's been a month. But yeah, it's a surgery without research. This is a UK band that I had never heard of. Martin Jones showed this album. And this is uh, their singles. I think it's their eight singles, the A and B sides. It's all the songs. It's really, these guys are really good. It's almost a little too perfect for me. It's like... Kind of like punk by numbers, you know. Everything that punk's supposed to be, they do it right on T, you know. Fantastic uh, music musicianship. That's what the vinyl looks like. Surgery without research. Cuts from the slab is the name of this. If you like 80s English punk you would love this like i said it's it's almost by the numbers and it comes with this book with you know all their singles and everything inside really good record thank you martin jones god this this video is gonna suck I, i'm fuck this is sucking dude ah, i need something stronger 
Anyways, on to the final finds from yesterday. What I found, I what I found is one of the stores, his prices were exactly the same as they were before this coronavirus bullshit. And the other two, their prices were lower. I mean, they obviously they want to get rid of some stock, you know. But anyways, the first one I picked up is this Bittersweet by The Hangman. I think this is a 67 release. It's on Monument. Really good album. It starts off, the first song, Dream Baby. I think that's the... Is that a Roy Oberson cover? Oh, Dream Baby. Whatever. They do a really good psych version of it. Fantastic. One of the better songs on the album. It fo It's followed by a 60s, guess what? Kind of a poppy 60s song. It even has a trumpet in there. Crazy Man sounds like a Country Joe McDonald song. Let It Be Me is the worst song on the side. It's that cover. Uh, Terrible Tonight is really good. And Faces. really It really ends in really good garagey type sound. And, and Side 2 is the same type of thing. The last song is Gloria. Five and a half minute version of Gloria. Good version, but... Do I really need another version of Gloria? Overall, I'm very happy with this album. I mean, I dig these 60s. Obscure bands. Kind of garagey. Kind of psyche. And this is on the Monument label. Is this the label that the Mafia did in order for tax purposes? I think it might be. I'm not sure. I could be totally wrong. Original Inner Sleeve, I'm assuming. Now the next one is another 60s kind of Americana with a psych, heavy psych uh, tinge. It's uh, the Holy Modal Rounders. This is the Maury Eels Eat the Holy Modal Rounders. Really good album. It's it's pretty weird album. It's not for everybody. It's got like Americana type songs and then it goes into these weird things. But yeah, really good album. I heard this album when I first started buying vinyl and I didn't really like it. To me, it seemed like they were trying too hard to be weird. But... I re-listened to it and I go, man, this is, it's it's really good. I was surprised to see it up on the wall, to be honest, in such good shape. I mean, this thing is in excellent shape. And I, I'm not really sure how their other albums sound. If they're as psychedelic as this one. Original sleeve. And uh, really great shape, man. On the Electra label. I, I dig this. If you're really into psych... Or Americana, but it, it is kind of weird. Now this next one is more of a straightforward album. It's Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks. I, it, what's weird is some of my favorite Bob Dylan albums I do not own on vinyl. And it's the same way with the Rolling Stones. My very favorite Rolling Stones albums, I don't own on vinyl, you know. It's kind of weird. But, I mean, I did at one time, but they're long gone at this point. This is... What I'm trying to say is this is one of my favorite Bob Dylan albums, and I did not own it. I did buy that uh, alternative one that came out for uh, Record Store Day that was all the New York recordings. This is like half New York, I think, and half from Minnesota. And I'm glad, I mean, I'm familiar with this album, Tangled Up in Blue, one of my favorite Bob Dylan songs. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to have this. And we all know what... I, I, I don't know why I show these common labels, but it's a habit I've gotten into, and I just... You know, everything. Now, when I go to record stores, I usually check this band's... There are a few bands that I check their section, and this is one of them. And occasionally you get surprised and you see something that you've never seen before. And I found the Cramps Rock and Roll Monster Bash. It's really good. Um, it's a live show. 
apparently this is a very highly craved or sought after bootleg and this is a reissue of that and this actually has the complete show it's supposedly been remastered to sound even better than the original I wouldn't know but this does sound very good and I'm always happy to add a cramps to my collection I mean I know all these songs like the back of my hand there's nothing surprising there and it's Julian on guitar and I think I saw the band with that lineup it was two female guitars but yeah really good shit Rock and Roll Monster Bash. I recommend this if you ever come across it. And yeah, the originals of this go for over a hundred bucks. And they don't. It doesn't. They don't have the same cover though. But yeah, it's really good. I'm trying to look. Where was this recorded at? Oh, recorded at the Edge, Toronto, July 18th, 1980. Yeah, this must have been. I don't know, before Kid Congo Powers was with him or not? I don't know. I remember seeing him uh, with the two female guitar players, though. But yeah, man, when Kid Congo was with him, man, that, that might have been the best. Now this next, it's a hardcore punk, but it's not, it's more of a melodic hardcore punk. It's, uh, this is uh, approved by Derek Higgins. Yeah, one time I heard him, on one of his videos, when I used to watch his videos, you know, before he turned all to shit, he uh, he was talking about this band, and he, you know, he gave him a thumbs up. I had seen this band before. I had never bought their albums. I saw this in the twenty dollar range. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get it, and it's really good. Listen to it last night. They're from the Bay Area, if I remember right. I didn't do any research for this shit. Yeah, they're from the, I know they're from the northern area, northern California area. It's on Libertine Records from Berkeley. So, yeah. This is the insert. It's got words that are hard to read. And it's blank on this side. And it's that's what the label looks like. Before the Fall, Social unrest really cool I always I mean I can't get enough of this shit you know in fact I'm, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of my classic rock to make room for more of it I can't get enough of this shit the la we're down to the last record here <laughs> and it's detox and I think it's just called album this is a band from L.A. area. I I think I had seen this band, and I didn't really, wasn't really that impressed with them, you know. But Mahabali Ka, or however you say his name, he had shown their albums. They have two albums, I believe. And he talked about them, and, you know, okay, piqued my interest. I thought, you know, whenever I run across one, I'll pick it up. And it's on Flipside Records. Which is another plus. Anything I see on Flipside Records, these days I'll probably pick up. And yeah, pretty cool picture on the back. And pretty disturbing picture on the front. I don't know if that's a baby in a bag or something. And here you get this guy giving Lee Harvey Oswald a shot in his temple. But anyways, they're classified as hardcore punk. But they play rather slow. They're, they're kind of like a slower... The uh, Flipper played kind of slow, but these guys don't sound like Flipper at all. I, I mean, I think these guys are better than Flipper. The side two is just one song. Really long song. And Everybody's an Idiot Except Me is the name of that song. It's on black vinyl. Detox. On Flipside Records. Very cool. Right up my alley. And it came with this. Ooh. 
with words on one side and a pitcher, really blurry pitcher and a little write up on them. Anyways, that's it, man. Pretty short. Maybe my last uh, finds for a while. I'm going to be moving. So I don't really, you know, the more records I buy, the more I have to move. So take care.